Today we're going to talk about short field and stole takeoff techniques. And as we discuss the short field takeoff, what you'll find is there's no answers, just more questions and grounds for discussions and thoughts. In aviation, the way it was meant to be. Scooter with the Great Michigan Bush Company. Today we're here to talk about takeoffs and talk specifically about short takeoffs. I'm an aviation enthusiast who spent a bit of time practicing getting in and out of side country, or at least Michigan, back country farm field strips. When we look at takeoffs, I like to think about three things. First are the non-pilot variables. Second would be the aircraft variables. And third are pilot techniques. First, let's look at the non-pilot variables. A large non-pilot variable is field conditions. Is it dirt? Is it asphalt? Is it grass? If it's grass, how long is the grass? Anything that's going to slow down your acceleration is going to increase your takeoff roll, and you need to take that into consideration. Also look at the slope. Does it slope up? Does it slope down? Obviously an upward slope is going to make for a longer takeoff distance, and a downward slope is going to do, make for a shorter takeoff roll. Consider the wind. Starting our first lesson, we're taught that a headwind is going to decrease our takeoff distance. But what's normally glossed over is a tailwind will more greatly decrease our takeoff performance than a headwind will increase it. Check the notes in your performance charts and you'll clearly see this. Do we take off downhill with a tailwind or uphill with a headwind? What combination will provide the shortest distance over the obstacle? Is it a one-way in strip? One way out strip where the tailwind penalty needs to be accepted. Pilots need to assess the field conditions and then come up with a plan that will give us the safest takeoff. There's something else we need to think about it's our altitude. By looking at performance charts, we know that high altitude will decrease our takeoff performance. High density altitude will have the same effect. High temperatures increase density altitude. High field altitude increases density altitude. What pilots seem to forget is humidity. High humidity also increases density altitude. Humidity will have an effect. Let's look at an atmosphere with a 90 degree temperature and a high humidity. We'll have a density altitude at sea level of about 2,500 feet. If we take that same sea level altitude at 90 degrees temperature and we dry the air out to a low humidity level, we will have a 2,000 foot density altitude. Pilots may take into account the temperature and its effect on density altitude. Many pilots do not take into consideration the humidity. Those are the primary non-pilot variables. Next, we need to consider the aircraft variables. The first aircraft variable to consider is the power plant. A bigger engine will produce more horsepower. A better to power to weight ratio will give you better takeoff performance. When we buy an airplane, it comes with an engine and most people stick with that engine. Even if you decide not to upgrade your engine, maintaining your engine to the highest standards will still have an effect on your takeoff distance. After power plants, we have to consider propellers. In general, a finer pitch propeller will increase your acceleration, decreasing the takeoff roll. The finest pitch propeller that your aircraft type certificate allows will give you the shortest takeoff distance. Depending on your aircraft, you can also look at a constant speed propeller. With a constant speed propeller, you get a variable pitch, but you're also going to have added weight in a CG shift forward. So this can be a balance. Do you want to add the extra weight of a variable pitch propeller? Or do you want to stick with a fixed pitch propeller and a fine pitch? Which brings up another variable, and that's weight. Weight is a huge aircraft variable. To me, it's the place you should go first. A lighter aircraft weight needs less lift. 
that lower amount of lift can be made at a slower airspeed. And if you can take off slower, you can get off the ground shorter. There's a lot we can do to reduce weight in our airplane. Lightweight interiors, lightweight starters, lightweight generators, lightweight batteries. Losing that weight is going to create a huge decrease in your takeoff distance. Another way we can decrease our takeoff distance in some airplanes, especially tail wheels, would be bigger tires. I have found a reason for bigger tires. Bigger tires look good. They also increase our deck angle while sitting on the ground. I know that my Stinson sits at 12 degrees to the relative wind while rolling in the three-point position but the aircraft stalls at a 16 degree angle of attack. So at a 15 degree angle of attack, the airplane would be flying. But I can only get to 12 degrees nose up on the takeoff roll. This means to produce the amount of lift to get off the ground, I have to have more airspeed. So if I could bring my pitch up to 15 degrees on the ground, I could produce enough lift at a slower airspeed to get off the ground sooner. So 31 inch tires would help me get off the ground at a slower airspeed. But the eight and a half inch tires I use now weigh 10 pounds versus the 31 inch tires that weigh 30 pounds each. So where's the bigger benefit? Is it in the decreased weight or the increased pitch and the better angle of attack in the three point position? So there is a reason for bigger tires. If you go from a seven inch tire to a larger tire, you'll find the added pitch on the ground from the larger tires will allow you to take off at a slower airspeed. The other aircraft variable would be high lift devices such as VGs. They're inexpensive and they work. Watch the video I have posted. It makes a difference in my airplane stall speed. If you can produce more lift at a slower airspeed, you can get off the ground shorter. We also have high lift flaps, wing extension, slats. All of these will decrease your takeoff distance. These benefits do not end up linearly. Each additional modification will have diminishing returns. If VGs save you five knots and slats save you five knots, put them together, you won't get a 10 knot benefit. You'll probably get something more like six or seven knots. With the aircraft variables, in my opinion, the first thing you do is attack the weight of your aircraft and then add high lift devices. But this is gonna be pilot specific. Last, we'll look at pilot techniques. There are three primary techniques for short field takeoffs. The first is tail low. The tail low technique is a simple technique. Advance the throttle, hold your brakes. Once you reach full throttle, Release the brakes, start down the runway, and just lift the tail wheel one or two, maybe three inches off the ground. You're just looking to get rid of the drag from the tail wheel. Uh, keep that near three point attitude until the aircraft lifts off the ground, transition into ground effect, and once you reach best angle of climb, climb out. The second pilot technique is the tail high. You're going to do the same as the tail low. You're going to hold your brakes, advance the throttle. Once you reach full power, release the brakes. The aircraft will accelerate. When able to lift the tail to a level attitude, do that. And once you reach the correct takeoff speed, jerk the plane off the ground. If timed correctly, the tail wheel touches the ground at the same time as the mains lift off the ground. That will indicate the shortest takeoff distance using the tail high technique. This technique requires a little more practice and there's room for error. If you pull up early, the tail wheel will bounce on the ground and the takeoff roll will be substantially increased. Again, this technique requires a little more practice, but it helps protect your tail from debris as you roll down a gravel or a rocky runway. And many pilots think it's the shortest takeoff roll. The third Pilot technique is also a tail high technique, but when you pull the aircraft in the air, you simultaneously pull the flaps to full. As you transition into ground effect, you set your flaps back down to climb setting, accelerate the best angle, and then climb out. A lot of pilots maintain this technique will get you off the ground in the shortest distance, and once you're in the air, 
allows for faster acceleration to best angle. If you have a big enough engine, you may not even need to stay in ground effect as the aircraft will accelerate to best angle before you complete the flap retraction. Stay watching this video to the end to see a demonstration of all three takeoff techniques from inside the aircraft. Please leave a comment below telling me your favorite pilot technique for short takeoffs. I'd love to hear what you do and what you've been successful with. Give us a thumbs up if you like this stuff. Thanks for watching and hope to see you guys in the sky. There's my RPM and we release. Just a little bit, not too much. There we go, just like that. And then the airplane should just come off the ground. There we go, we're off. And that's your tail low. Now I do believe that's going to be your most consistent. I'm not quite treetop height, but treetop height there at right around a thousand feet. Full power. There it is, release. Right about here, I get the tail up, tails up, and then I think right about here, there it is, yep, and the tail bounced, and I'm in the air, now I'm in ground effect, there's my best rate, and I rotate up. Alright, release the brakes. Tail low, tail high. There it is. I have no idea which one was quicker.